Hi, this is MXUX. I am doing this video on the Fed and a recent presentation by a Fed analyst that is extremely bullish on Lordstown Motors. I'm going to show how the present economic conditions don't really affect the market for the Lordstown Endurance. I hope you like the video. Let's get started. Hi, this is MXUX. After that introduction, I want to go through this presentation. And I want to try to keep it short. This is all about what the Fed is doing and what a key Fed auto analyst has to say concerning Lordstown Motors, which is, in my opinion, very bullish for Lordstown Motors. So let's get started. This is titled Macro and Money in the Envi Macro and Money Environment and LEX, which is the new nomenclature for Lordstown Motors I've developed. That stands for Lordstown EV Corporation, which is how it is identified with the Natural uh, National Highway Tra Traffic Safety Association. Lordstown EV Corporation. L-E-X stands for corporation under teletype. I believe that's still in the stock market. So that's what I have decided to cause it, call it Lex. So we have Fox and Lex, Fox Lex. Anyway, let's move forward. Um, let's talk about the Federal Reserve. Okay. The Federal Reserve will likely hike in the coming meeting, despite Wall Street predictions, RCM and so forth. Um, Jerome Powell met with the Republicans and he told the Republicans there will be one more hike. So there will be one more hike. That would be probably 25 basis points and that'll take us uh, over 5%, well over 5%. So that is the latest information on that topic. Now, the banks, especially smaller regional banks, have unrealized losses on their books, as do commercial real estate interests, as do insurance companies. Um, the, com the, the commercial real estate companies have loans written at 2%. Uh, they don't write long mortgages on those. Those are all going to be coming due next quarter. Uh, Hedgeye just did a report on this. Billions of them. And those are going to renew from 1% to 2%, and the new rate is going to be, you know, 5 to 6%, whatever. So that is apocalyptic. As well, uh, the banks that hold these loans have reserves, uh, have their cash reserves in these low-interest bonds, which are unrealized losses as well. And the uh, small um, uh, regional banks, again, they take deposits. This is a fractional reserve system we have. They take deposits, they loan out uh, a large percentage of them, and they have a, you know, 10% of all the money on deposit is actually with the bank. What they do is they backstop this uh, with, uh, and I'm not an economist, so bear with me on this, but in any case, they backstop this with bonds, and these bonds are at 1% and 2%. With the interest rate now at 5%, these bonds are underwater. If they get a run on the bank, they're going to have to cash these banks in. They are not going to get par value for these uh, bonds. Uh, it's going to be below par because the interest rate's higher. It's going to be knocked back because the interest rate's higher. So a $100 bond is going to be bought back for $90. They're going to end up being short to cover their depositors. This is the whole bank problem we have. Um, so if there's a run on deposits, they need deposits. This is what's going to happen. And you say, well, you know, it's only a two or 3% loss. Well, it's on trillions of dollars. That's the thing. And uh, also not being mentioned here uh, is insurance companies also have uh, these, uh, you know, I guess they're liquidity accounts. Uh, in their case, it would be premiums, I imagine. But again, these are at 1% to 2% in government bonds, 
and they are underwater if there's a large natural disaster or some other demand on capital made to these insurance companies they're also at risk of, of not being able to cover their obligations because uh, they're underwater now the Fed has put in an institution I don't know if it covers commercial real estate and insurance companies where banks are allowed to borrow at par against these assets for one year uh, without interest but they got to pay it back but um, there's still risk uh, nor uh, uh, the guy who predicted the black swan nor uh, Norabel what's his name I uh, just did a piece said there's tremendous risk in the system now here's the thing these one to two percent bond collateral bonds to get returns on excess cash during the pandemic everybody's saying well these banks didn't know what they were doing they bought these two percent long bonds 10-year bonds whatever they are at two percent never thinking interest rates going on you have to understand that Fed guidelines uh, under the Dodd-Frank uh, banking reform and other things encourages, because of taxation and other balance sheet conditions, encourages, the Fed encouraged uh, through the regulations, the purchase of these long bonds. And you could say that these banks were mismanaged by uh, taking these long bonds uh, on as collateral to their cash accounts and so forth. However, these were Fed guidelines. And now, since these are Fed guidelines, Jerome Powell has got to know uh, that these deposits were out there. Or, or are we all, you know, like I say, the victims of a monstrous hoax? Does nobody know what they're doing? Are all these Ivy League guys uh, suiting and booting? and there's nothing in the suit <laughs> i don't know but um again the reason we're in this condition is because the fed encouraged the purchase of these long bonds at one to two percent okay and now they're underwater and there's a lack of liquidity in the system the, uh, and here we have the fed tax structure implored these entities to do this via the existing rule legal structure it's important to note again Everybody says, well, why did they buy these long bonds at these low rates? It's because that was the uh, de rigueur under the regulations. Now, the Fed, uh, the Fed raising rates uh, 20x in less than a year has put all these bonds underwater. Okay, so this is what I've been talking about. There's, these are unrealized losses. These are losses that are on the book that they haven't realized yet. That's like when your stock portfolio goes down, but you don't cash it out. It's unrealized loss. Same thing. Uh, and again, some banks is borrowing Fed cash at par value of these bonds for one year. This has to be paid back. And it is a, it is a, I have a bank stop. It's a backstop against bank runs to provide liquidity. A lot of people think this is going to be enough. Uh, there are trillions of these bonds out. And the result of these banks taking advantage of this par borrowing is it is going to inject cash into the system and again they're going to be looking returns on this cash but in any case all this cash being injected into the system is why chicken genius has recommended buying okay this is uh, cavico capital this is a charting channel I follow. I think uh, these guys are pretty fantastic. And this is their take on the economy. This is just late breaking. I wanted to add it to this video. Let me see if I can play a short segment. Link in the video. Link in the description. Error. Started to develop a similar look last year. The cloud is turning green here. This is October. The ratio was above the cloud, and again, you really don't see that a lot. What's noteworthy is when the ratio started to fall, and more importantly, made it back below the cloud here, the major low in the S&P 500 was in the rear view mirror. Something similar just happened this week. For the first time, we have a similar look.
BIL divided by XLK is below the cloud, the weekly cloud for the first time. You can make an argument at this point here, similar to this point in here, which again is after the major low in the S&P 500. Similar story. This looks different than anything we had in the rear view mirror here during the bear market. And it also looks similar to this point here after the major low was in place. If we zoom in on this portion, all of this just this week below the cloud, we're also getting the cloud turning from green in favor of cash over tech to red. Brand new signal. March 31st, telling us from a probability perspective, the odds have shifted back in favor of XLK. Convincingly, not yet. We'd really like to move away from the cloud a little bit, but it's a good start. Others have not. Uh, I just watched Hedgeye, a Hedgeye presentation. They said the second quarter of this year is when all these... Um, uh, Real estate, uh, commercial real estate loans are going to be refinanced and it's going to be bad. They see it as the Titanic, their strong gold. Kathy Wood, as I said in here somewhere, I believe is into crypto. But Chicken Genius says because of this, um, at least interim, uh, there's going to be money going into the market and then the market is up. Uh, I'm not sure that this borrowing... For these bonds, uh, these par, uh, you, you know, they're able to borrow at par, which is the full value, face value of the bond, uh, uh, for one year. Um, I don't think insurance companies and real estate firms have access to this. Someone can correct me if I'm wrong on that. So we just, we, we, this is endemic throughout the world and throughout many, many different companies and many different market segments. Uh, and again, I say here, cash uh, in will feed stocks. Chicken Genius says buy now. Again, Norio Robini says extreme potential risk. Uh, Hedgeye says the quarter of doom with commercial real estate coming up. Kathy Wood appears to me to be hedging with uh, Bitcoin as, as much as possible, buying Coinbase and uh, cash uh, block. It is blocked now. Uh, anyway, this is kind of where we are at. So we have trillions of dollars of bonds throughout the world economy that are pledged as collateral uh, to cash deposits and, and other assets. Again, not a financial guy here, but I'm just saying the point is these are all underwater. So none of this <laughs> None of these deposits that they're covering are covered by these assets. This is what we're looking at, and um, bank runs are the problem, but I think there are other complications. These commercial real estate mortgages, what's going to happen is um, when they do these commercial real estate projects, as I understand, they establish a corporation for each building or each project, and if they have worked out the financing of this project, you know, they go 20 years, uh, you know, buy versus lease, uh, whatever the analysis is uh, at a certain current, uh, at a certain interest rate for the project to make sense. If it renews from 2% to 6%, they will just hand the, be, uh, the keys into the bank and the banks are going to end up owning all these buildings that nobody wants. And uh, this is another shoe that may drop. Uh, so Chicken Genius says buy now, and that may be the intermediate term. I don't know. You have to make your own decision. The world is fraught with risk. Uh, result, every firm that owns these bonds is underwater and has unrealized loss on the books unless the Fed cuts rates to make them whole. The Fed has said they are going to make one. They, Jerome Powell told the Republican caucus that they are going to make one more rate hike. So they are not going to start cutting rates, although they said uh, extraordinary circumstances would cause them to do that. Will they pause after this? Probably. Maybe. We don't know. Uh, and uh, But we got one more rate hike for sure. Um, there's no way around that. I mean, uh, it looks to be a certainty. 
uh, I don't know what Wall Street is, that uh, is it CMI index. Perhaps I'll try to find a, a clip of the CMI index that does. Uh... Okay, this is MXUX. This is a CME group uh, FedWatch. This is a tool they use this. They base this on futures contracts on the Fed rate. And what they have here, as my understanding how to read this, this is for the May 3rd meeting. If you come over here, no change is 52% in change. A raise is 47.7. Very close, but the, the, the futures contracts are saying uh, no hike. And uh, I think these guys are wrong. According to the presentation Powell gave to the caucus of republicans so this is no hike this is hike they're looking at no change and powell clearly stated that he is going to hike so this you can take into your evaluation of the market oh also uh three weeks ago Tom Lee said, we're heading into a bull rally in April, and this may be April to May. So, had mentioned we didn't hear from, we haven't really heard from Tom Lee in a month, so that was his last word. Anyway, that's it. Uh, let's get back to the video. Of Wall Street sentiment on rate hike possibilities on here. Uh, the point is, the Fed is not going to cut rates, not in the next quarter or two. Uh, again, Hedge Eye, which called the last uh, 2008 uh, catastrophe, says it is the Titanic going down, the stock market. Uh, especially, they mentioned today, anybody with calls on Tesla is in for a surprise. I don't know. You have to evaluate that yourself. Uh, Hedge Eye is bullish on gold. Kathy Wood, bullish on Bitcoin. Tom Lee who I think is one of the most astute uh, economic analysts, says the Fed actions, actions have either broken something or something in the economy has changed. That's very nebulous. Um, I cannot find any definitive uh, word uh, from Tom Lee lately. So I think the top guy, well, I mean, all these people are top people uh, that I follow. But uh, you have a range of different opinions there from Chicken Genius to Tom Lee to Kathy Wood to Hedge Eye. It's all over the place. But, uh, you know, uh, according to my rating, 51% uh, chance of downturn, okay, uh, of some type. Uh, and there could, could be a positive black swan or a, what's that, a white swan, a, a pink swan that could turn everything around. Now. I have down here, now Trump has been in the news, this is not a political channel, I don't support or not support Trump, I just want to say, I watched an interview with Trump, he proposed increasing the oil supply, and this is actually a pretty genius comment in my opinion. I am not a big fan of the Laffer curve, and Laffer was the, the author of Reaganomics, but, but Laffer does have a point in, you know, you can uh, quash demand or increase supply to lower inflation. And in this case, increasing oil supply would have an effect to lower inflation. Uh, energy is a component of all consumption. Everything you buy has an energy component, whether that's transporting the raw materials, delivering it to your house, so on and so forth. Right now, we have a uh, oil-based uh, energy system, hydrocarbon energy system. Uh, 
and oil prices are going up. You see uh, Buffett is buying Oxy. This is why he's buying Oxy. And by the way, we need oil. We're uh, According to my estimations, we're at or very near peak oil, which means all the cheap oil has been gotten. So it's just going to get more expensive from here. And I think this is why Buffett also is buying Oxy. Uh, and we do need oil, even if we go to all electric cars, because we need uh, plastics and other things that are made from hydrocarbons so there's just no way around it but uh i think a major move and i think uh, the president administration is moving backwards on this they uh they are not I, although they are looking at uh, opening a reserve up in um, in alaska or the arctic area the thing is one thing that could change the inflation picture is increasing oil supply um whether you like that or not, uh, that would have the effect of that is a is a uh, denominator of everything we buy. So anyway, interestingly, Trump is right on that. And uh, I think that's an interesting proposition. Uh, now, just getting down to the nitty gritty here, the ultimate solutions include the Fed buying all of these underwater bonds back from the holders at par. Uh, so retiring all these bonds and giving the holders cash for them uh, so that, uh, you know, whatever the par would be, you know, they were sold at a discount of 2%. So uh, they would pay them the full amount. So in other words, uh, uh, you know, a $10 bond was sold for $8 at maturity it would pay 10. They would buy them back at 10. So that would involve the Fed retiring all of these bonds from all these parties all over the world. Trillions, trillions of dollars. That would infuse cash into the money slide. Could be, could be worldwide inflation. The second solution is the Fed insures deposits at all levels uh, to stop bank runs. And there's political opposition to this from the Republican Party. Uh, you know, in the SVB, they guaranteed any amount of deposit over and above the 250K Federal Reserve uh, guarantee. Uh, the third, uh, a third option here, and I believe this is being uh, discussed regarding money market accounts. You have to do your own research on this. But in general, there is a rumble that uh, they want to impose rules that limit your access to your money to uh, stop bank runs. Uh, I don't know what form this would take, but there's a couple different proposals out there. There's some considerations out there. Um, you know, under certain conditions, you would not be allowed to withdraw money, things of this nature. This is actually being talked about. You have to research it yourself. There's nothing formal yet. I do believe there was just a rule regarding money market fund withdrawals uh, that a law that was passed that went into effect. You have to research that yourself. But that's another. Of course, this would be the Kathy Wood argument for Bitcoin, because, of course, they are trying to control Bitcoin, but uh, Bitcoin would not fall under these rules presently. And then I have here the tinfoil hat. I have a video out about Powell raising rates. I had in that video uh, have Jerome Powell raised rates to bring credit card and other debt based on the Fred rate to current dollars for big banks. I think big banks had about, I don't know, 12 trillion I'm, I'm, is the number of, for example, credit card uh, debt. And this was all debt that was undertaken at 2% interest rates. And now that the interest rates are 5%, um, they want this debt paid back in current dollars. In other words, they don't want the, the same loss uh, uh, that the, the bondholders are looking at by uh, having stuff on the books that's uh, uh, under par. And... My thesis was that, uh, you know, this was the, the the main reason, you know, the Fed is composed of bankers. They work for bankers. So that was my um, uh, thing so that the 
the big banks didn't theoretically in any case recognize uh, unrecognized losses on these uh, on this 12 trillion dollar of credit card debt so the fed raised rates uh, that was initially my uh, my first take on this race um and these rate hikes have also caused and will cause consolidation in banking uh making biggest the biggest banks bigger and uh, also the biggest banks are in the best position to uh, weather to deal with this underwater bond issue and uh, they have more liquidity uh, so again are we all the victims of a monstrous hoax i think we have to question what uh Jerome Powell's rationale is now some people have said that it's to uh, has to do with the the value international value of the dollar and keeping the dollar of the cons the world currency but uh, of course there I, this this is my tinfoil hat argument uh anyway I don't I that could at least be part of it summary so what we're going to have uh and this is coming if not here it's going to take time according to the experts credit's going to tighten up you know they're going to make it harder to borrow you're going to have to be it's you have to jump through more hoops have higher credit ratings uh banks will hike hike uh, liquid collateral levels so they are going to uh try to backstop their uh balance sheets uh the t-bill rates will drop to zero and there's uh, there's this is already happening uh there there are you know they're buying short-term t-bills uh with zero return just to have liquidity uh secure liquidity to uh back these collateral levels and i have down here maybe limits on deposits withdrawals okay this is i mentioned earlier and large unrecognized losses exist throughout the world economy throughout the world economy uh so stocks may benefit from uh increased cash in the system you know from these fed injections and that's the chicken genius uh, thesis and chicken genius says bye chicken genius is a pretty smart guy anyway now here's the thing what does this fed activity have to do with lordstown motors corporation or lmx as i call it uh autoline daily after hours had a panel discussion they had a auto analyst from the chicago federal reserve uh, on this call and it was incredibly bullish for lordstown motors and i'm going to play a clip of this uh and uh, i'm going to put the links in the uh, uh description i have two links under here that you can look at on the screen and copy if you like um this fed analyst says municipalities and governments including the federal government at all levels want to replace fleets okay as i said there's unrequited uh, demand for Fleet, fleet vehicles they, they haven't had any for two three years they, they're at end of life they especially want to replace these things with battery electric vehicles by law in, in a lot of places these municipalities and governments including the federal government can't find vehicles to buy they have had orders in for a year and they are not getting their vehicles you know the ford pro is you know it's like uh we're all the victims of a monstrous hoax on that too because i mean they're just not making them why would they they're going to make the higher uh value added vehicles they're not going to dedicate battery units and so forth to the forty thousand dollar which is now had the price just raised again i do believe the price of the base Ford Pro is now at $54,000. Don't quote me on that. So we have the endurance base price at 56. I'm sure that it, it will match the endurance uh, base price. Uh, but they cannot 
by these vehicles. I want you to listen to this uh, clip. I'm going to play it right now. Hi, this is MXUX. I just want to play this. This is a Federal Reserve Bank of Chicago auto analyst on auto line after hours. And she is going to make a comment here uh, pointed out in the presentation that is very bullish for Lordstown Motors. And let me just see if I can get that to play for us. Okay, so, so Kristen, Jeff, I mean, I, let's start by each of you talking about, you know, how you characterize the period we're in right now in the auto industry. I mean, what, what, what are the things that, that people really need to be paying attention to? Well, you know, I'll say nothing is normal still. Um, it's getting back to normal, but nothing is normal. Um, and, you know, there, we started the year with, I think Jeff might agree, cautious optimism uh, that this year some things would start to work out and get a little better. Um, you know, production recovery is underway. Uh, you know, there's companies that are managing their their inventory a little bit uh, more closely. Prices are starting to mediate and, and level out um, to address some of the affordability. And there's still a whole lot of pent up demand out in the in the retail customer as well as fleet. Um, you know, one of the fleets that we don't think about too much is government fleets. And many states and, you know, the federal government in particular are looking to buy EVs or plug-in hybrids and they haven't been able to get them and they haven't been able to get them at the prices that governments usually pay. Uh, so there's, uh, you know, I talked to a state that you know, was getting ready, the legislature was going to pull their budget because they put in their orders in October when their fiscal year started and getting around to the end of the year, they still didn't have the vehicles. So um, there's a lot of uh, of demand out there. We just have to see how, how strong it holds up this year. Okay. Okay, now I'm back. Um, this is crazy. Uh, a lease under the under this market qualifies for all available tax credits under the IRA, IRA at full levels. Um, so, in other words, uh, this is a perfect market for the Lordstown Endurance. And under a lease, a lease is the same as an individual buyer. So these, there's going to be an, a, a massive tax incentive to lease these BEV vehicles. And again, we're looking at the Laffer curve. We're looking at supply and demand. Increasing supply in this market is also going to lower the price. It's actually just, I don't know what the government is doing because we need these vehicles. Why are they allowing <clears throat> these new companies to be you know, why are they not supporting these new companies? Why hasn't uh, Lordstown Motors gotten the government uh, innovation uh, grant uh, that uh, other companies have got? Uh, you know, Aptera just got a $21 million grant from California. Why hasn't Lordstown Motors? Why hasn't Lordstown received the, the federal uh, grant that uh, Tesla received back when it was at the same stage of development? Uh, the government is just not supporting uh, Lordstown Motors. And I just want to make that point. But the other point is, this is a market that is waiting to be tapped. This is the, the potential here uh, for a fleet. And, and, and by the way, uh, pickup trucks are the number one, are, are in the top 10 vehicles of every consumer segment for automobiles. Are, there's a pickup truck in it. Uh, the Endurance is one of three uh, pickup trucks right now, and that would be the Ford uh, Lightning, which is having battery recall problems and production, and they're having trouble meeting production, and they're talking about two years. You know, uh, Ford is milking this for all it's worth, in my opinion. Uh, you have Rivian, which really does not operate at this cost basis or in a fleet mode. They do not have a fleet model. Um, so, 
I think this is a really perfect setup for Lordstown Motors. And uh, anyway, I have down here, um, this is a crazy bullish for Lordstown Motors. And I think the key is this demand basically bypasses all these banking issues especially when you're focused on the fleet market. Because these municipalities and federal government, they have budgets in place to buy these vehicles. They cannot get these vehicles. So that's uh, all I have to say on this. Uh, good luck in the market. I hope you like the uh, video. And again, there is the auto line uh, link right there for the full video on this. I'll put it in the description as well. Again, uh, this comes straight from the Fed, and this is uh, very bullish uh, for Lordstown Motors. This is MXUX. Good luck in the market. Thanks for checking out the presentation.